I think we all know that I am not the biggest modern house person. It's just not really my vibes. I would never want a house like that in real life, so I just don't really like doing it in The Sims either. Everybody's got their own style preferences, and mine is just a little bit more traditional in terms of architecture, I guess. But I'm gonna be really brave today, and I'm gonna attempt to build a very modern beach house in The Sims 4. This is kind of silly, but I actually saw this house plan on Etsy of all places, and I really liked the vibes of this exterior, specifically the stone accents and these like little vertical panels. I think that this kind of thing could really work well in The Sims 4. So we're not gonna try and recreate that picture exactly, but I wanna do something kind of like it. So we're building this house in Sulani, which is that beach world that came with Island Living. So when I said I wanted to make a beach house, I was not kidding, this house is literally on on the beach, and I picked this lot in particular because I didn't want the house to be on the water. There are a few lots in Sulani that have a very small amount of sand, and it's mostly water, and the houses are like on stilts above the water. With this one, I wanted the full house to be on the ground and it just have beach access, so I picked that 40 by 30 lot up in like the top right corner of the world. It's usually empty and it's usually off the grid by default. This house is very clearly not off the grid. This is like a really fancy modern luxury home, so they have like all kinds of fancy TVs and stuff, but that's why I picked this lot, just to have enough space to put a full house on the sand and also have the water. And I did a couple of really weird things with this house that you might not love, but I swear if you give me some time, we'll make it work. And the first one is glaringly obvious right there. It's the second story pool that I have added into the lot. There were some real mixed reviews of this pool in my Twitch chat at first. A lot of people were like, why are you adding a pool? This house is on the beach. Like the ocean is right there, to which I would respond, well, all kinds of luxury beach mansions have pools. All kinds of luxury beach hotels have pools. It's not that weird. These are fancy people. They've got all kinds of money. They're gonna pay for a pool over here. And then it begs the question, Kayla, why is it on the second floor? And to that, I would say, yeah, I know, it's really annoying. The problem is, you can't do pools in the ground on these beach lots. There's weirdly a few things that you can't do on these beach lots in Sulani. You can't make them into rental residential you can't add basements, you can't add pools, and I will say the basement pool thing kind of makes sense. The lot isn't completely flat, and also, you know, if you tried to dig in the ground, you would hit the water. <laughs> it's like how we don't have basements in Florida because the water table's too high. Well, this is literally on the beach, so I, I get it, I understand. It's just kind of annoying. I wish you could still do pools at least. So because of that though, I was not able to put a pool in the ground, so I had to kind of work around it, and what I tried to do instead was put a pool on the second floor. I actually tried a few things. I thought about trying to like build a platform that was like raised up exactly the right height and then putting the pool there and having like a kind of weird split level pool thing. It was just very complicated because of the medium wall height and because of the foundation and stuff. The main reason I tried to do that was because I didn't love that the pool was medium wall height too because the whole first floor is medium wall height. But I didn't want the pool to be that deep. It's kind of creepy when water is that deep but I ended up just kind of dealing with it. And you'll see eventually I add the pool back onto the side of the house and then we kind of cover it up on the side with like some plants and stuff. Basically, the pool just becomes like an addition of the first floor that you can't go into <laughs> and you just access it from the second floor. And as far as the rest of the layout of this house goes, it turns out to be a three bedroom, three bathroom house. The whole downstairs is mostly living space. There's a nice big living room, kitchen, dining room, and there's also a primary bedroom downstairs. And then upstairs, there's two bedrooms, another bathroom, and also like a big secondary living room that has access to the big upstairs patio. I always kind of cringe when I do stuff like that in my Sims builds, like with these big open vast spaces that are unnecessary because you don't really need a second living room for your Sims, they're not gonna use it. So I always kind of cringe thinking, oh, it should have been a bedroom, like it'd be better to have more bedrooms in the house. But like functionally for this layout, I didn't want to have the pool be off of a bedroom, I wanted it to have like a big sliding door that anybody could access through a hallway, so it ended up working out like that. And that's okay, fancy people, they have lots of open space in their homes that feels unnecessary. <laughs> we have to remember that we are not the target audience of this home. At least I am not the target audience of this home. I would never want this, but also I am not the person who would buy a multi-million dollar beach mansion. So I have to channel 
beach mansion people when I'm thinking about it. But you can see now what I'm kind of trying to do to make it look less weird from the outside. I put windows into the actual house part, and then on the first floor where it is just the pool, I tried to put some paneling there, because I thought it kind of helped to make it look like it was intentional on the downstairs. And then we go through and add in a ton of plants. I used a lot of the lush landscaping from like Island Living and For Rent, some of that debug stuff too, to just make it really tropical over here. It kind of helps to cover up that weird extended section on the downstairs also. The house is very wide horizontally, but it's not actually that big. So I think that like it kind of seemed a bit, I don't know, lopsided, I guess, because of this big downstairs area. So I was trying to like balance it out a bit more with plants. I should warn you, I used quite a few packs on this build. You can already see I've used a million of them, but even things like the Desert Lux kit because of the cool open sliding doors. We've got things like Eco Lifestyle for the little column things. We've got Get Together for the fences and the bigger columns. We got Get Famous for the doors. Like <laughs> we just used all kinds of stuff everywhere in this build. I did post a limited pack build earlier this week. So hopefully this makes it up to you. <laughs> it was like a starter home type of build though. I should do like a limited pack big mansion like this for you at some point soon. So much to build and so little time. <laughs> There's always a million ideas swimming in my brain for Sims builds. But now is probably a good time to really quickly stop and give you a small life update because oh my God, we have been going through it <laughs> in this household recently. So a lot of you know that my cat had surgery last week to remove a cancerous tumor on her leg. This has been one of the like hardest weeks <laughs> ever for me dealing with this and like helping her recovery and everything. She's been kind of having a hard time and like emotionally for me, that's been very hard. So it's just, it's been a struggle. When you're seeing this, it's been almost two weeks since the surgery and she's getting her stitches out in a couple of days on Tuesday. I bet she is going to be extremely relieved on that day because she gets to have her cone off that day. She's had to wear like a little soft flower cone for like two weeks now and this poor cat, she doesn't hate it most of the time. She hates it a lot of the time. And so she's really not a fan. She's been struggling with it. I don't think she's in pain anymore. So that's a huge bonus. She's feeling a little bit better in that sense. It's just the cone is kind of a struggle, but she has to wear it or else she'll pull her stitches out and she doesn't understand that. So like she's mad at me because she's got a cone on her head and it, yeah. I think a lot of us have been through that with pets though. <laughs> it's just really hard because you can't explain it to them. So she just thinks like Kayla is evil and making me wear a cone for no reason, but actually it's because you're a danger to yourself. And honestly, Snap, if you knew any better, you'd be glad because you would not be pleased with yourself if you pulled your stitches out. We'd have to like go back to the vet. It'd be a whole thing. That would be worse. <laughs> so just listen and deal with the cone. But yeah, it's it's been a hard couple of weeks. Um, So thank you for bearing with me over this time because it's been just a lot and very emotional and stressful for me. So I'm sorry about like weird videos and stuff. I will say, and I'm sorry if it's mean to say, she does actually look really cute in the cone. It's like a little sunflower. So she just looks adorable, even though she's kind of grumpy. It's like grumpy old cat <laughs> in this adorable little sunny yellow sunflower cone. We do have some good pictures from this. So there's that. And on a more positive note, other life updates. This week I met with a florist for the wedding and I also went to a catering tasting. Imagine I'm actually recording this before I've done either of those things, but I am gonna go call the florist in like an hour and I'm going to the catering tasting tomorrow. So I'll let you know how that goes. I don't really know all that much what to expect out of this. This is a very new experience for me. So I'll, I'll talk you through what I know so far. The tasting costs a hundred dollars, but you can bring four people. And I had to pick out a whole bunch of things off their menu that we can taste. And then if I decide to book them, then they'll take the hundred dollars off the cost of the catering, which actually isn't that much money. <laughs> catering is the most expensive part of a wedding because food is so expensive. It's like food and alcohol, right? So it's very pricey. It can be like $80 a person to pay for a plated meal at the wedding. So them being like, oh, you'll pay for the tasting, but it's $100 off of the catering for the wedding. Okay. So that's one person's meal <laughs> at the wedding. Oh my God. It's kind of scary to think about. Flowers are also extremely expensive for weddings. There are things you can do to like lessen the cost, obviously. And this is stuff that I knew before we started planning a wedding. Like I, I've obviously heard people talk about it and stuff, but there's still that serious sticker shock when you actually look into it yourself. Nothing prepares you for that. <laughs> Even knowing that it's gonna be pricey and like knowing how much it's gonna be per person, you're still not ready when you see those numbers, you know? But don't worry, I will return and I'll update you on how both of these things go. <laughs> I'm really curious what it's gonna be like. I'm kind of nervous. This is one of the dumbest things I'm ever gonna say, but I'm really glad that my mom is coming to the tasting because I feel like I need a real adult there. <laughs> I'm 
kind of scared, so. Obviously Dan's gonna be there, but my, my sister and mom are coming too, so I'm like very relieved. <laughs> it's gonna make me feel a little bit less stressed. I'll stop talking about that stuff though, because we're actually doing flowers in the Sims build right now, <laughs> which is slightly more uh, appropriate <laughs> and maybe more interesting to most of you. So we've kind of finished most of the landscaping at this point, and one of the weird things that you might be noticing is the foundation. I went back and forth so much with the foundation. I didn't know what I wanted it to be like because most of the time and maybe every single beach house I've ever made in The Sims 4 has one of those stilted foundations, but I was putting that in and I just felt like it looked kind of weird. It was really strange to have like the big pillar of stone sitting on top of stilts and like to have the pool floating on top of stilts. Like it just, something seemed very off about it. So I kept like a solid concrete foundation instead. I did put a stilted foundation in the back only underneath the back patio. I think that back deck being raised makes sense, but everywhere else had a solid foundation. And I struggled a lot with the color scheme of it because I, I just don't like any of the foundations in The Sims 4 anymore. All of them are like not right. <laughs> the colors are weird. They're not actually white. They're, they're all like kind of gray toned. They don't match all of the wallpaper. Like I was using Island Living wallpaper on that big stone section of the house, but there's an Island Living foundation. It just only comes in two swatches and the wallpaper comes in like five. So you can't match them. Even if you wanted to, there isn't a matching version of the foundation. So I just, I had a really hard time picking what to use. I ended up just sticking with the plain white base game one. It's kind of boring, but like I, nothing else really worked. Thankfully, most of it is covered by plants. You can really only see it underneath the big stone pillar. There's so much landscaping everywhere else that you can't really tell what foundation is underneath it. You can see at this point though, I've kind of started to furnish the downstairs and like figure out a floor plan of this house. Do not be alarmed. None of this stuff is going to stay. <laughs> Oftentimes when I do my Sims builds, I go through and I pick out kind of like filler furniture just to go through and kind of imagine what the floor plan is going to be like. But in doing that, I often use really ugly stuff just kind of as like a placeholder so I can visualize how big the living room is and can I fit a dining table here, you know? And then we get stuff like this where I have the little kids room, tiny kids chairs in the dining room. And if you're not familiar with that, you might see it and be like, oh my God, why is she using those chairs? But don't worry, don't worry. I put normal chairs too. Those were just to figure out the floor plan. It was like experimentation, okay? That's actually kind of a good pro tip that I could give you when you're thinking about doing building in The Sims. If you struggle with floor plans, I use rugs a lot when I'm trying to figure out the size of rooms. It really helps me to place a rug down and like visualize scale. Like, will this fit? Can I have enough walking space around it? Does it work in here? So if you're trying to think about like where to put stuff, honestly, just putting some rugs down can really help you to picture it a bit more in these big empty rooms, especially in places like this one where it's kind of a big wide open floor plan. It's hard to think about where stuff's gonna go in that, so putting in some rugs and just kind of splitting it up really helps. You can see right now that we've put in the living room furniture, and I actually really, really like the layout of this house. It's an open floor plan, but it's not like completely open, which is kind of my ideal scenario. I don't love a big, giant, vast, empty room, but in this case, there's one big, long room. There's not a lot of walls in between them, but they all kind of have dedicated spaces. They're like tucked into corners and stuff. So when you first walk into the house, to the left, where we are right now is the living room. There's kind of a big staircase tucked into the corner behind it and there's a big kitchen in here as well. And this is also kind of a controversial thing that I've done recently a few times where I've put the living room closer to the kitchen than the dining room. Because in this case, the kitchen and living room are next to each other and the dining room's kind of tucked away in the corner to the right of the front door. And I know that when you think about it, it's like better to have the dining table closer to the kitchen. I get that. But in real life, functionally, most people don't use a formal dining room every day. Some people do, but not everybody. Like growing up, we never sat at the formal dining table. In my life now, I eat dinner on the couch every day. I'm always at the kitchen bar stool or on the couch when I'm eating. So I don't really use my formal dining table that much either. I use it like an office space more often if I'm being honest, cause I'll like work downstairs sometimes on my laptop and I'll sit at the dining table to do that. But I don't really ever eat there unless my parents are coming over. So in this house, I kind of pictured these Sims having a similar experience. So I put the dining room kind of tucked away and the living room is more central to the house, more easily accessible. And it also has more walls 
space. That was kind of the main inspiration is just that that big wall was good for a big TV and the other side didn't really have as much good space for a TV. And if we're being really honest with ourselves, our Sims are not gonna eat at the dining table anyway. <laughs> they're not gonna all eat at once and they're not gonna eat at the table. They're gonna sit on the couch and watch TV. They're gonna sit at the bar stool. And honestly, in my own gameplay, I would rather them sit on the couch and watch TV because I like how they can multitask and get their fun up and also eat breakfast at the same time. That's like my go-to method before school with my Sims. I'm like, okay, kids, grab your food, go sit on the couch, <laughs> eat and watch the TV to get your fun up and then you can go to school. That's been my like go-to method in the 100 baby challenge recently. So <laughs> they don't need a dining table. They're never gonna use it. Honestly, my Sims, similar to me, more often use the dining table to do like homework <laughs> instead of like eating at. But I'm actually kind of curious to know if that's how it is in your house because that's kind of how I grew up. Like as a kid, my mom, she would come home from work and then like set up her work laptop at the dining table and she would like work from home there a lot. So I would often do my homework at the dining table too. We'd like sit next to each other and both work. <laughs> so that's just normal to me. Like that's kind of how we grew up is using the table more for that than for eating. Of course, my mom has a home office now because I moved out and she stole my bedroom. She's gonna be watching this video. She watches all my videos and she's gonna text me about that. Just you wait. <laughs> she probably already started typing, but I'm curious to know if any of you do the same thing. Do you even have a formal dining table? Like what, what are the vibes in your house? Let me know in the comments. Well, now at this point, we are finally getting to the formal dining room of the house. <laughs> so I'm putting a rug down. This whole house has a very like light green, light blue, light orange kind of color scheme. The whole thing was based around that rug in the living room that kind of looks like a sunset, which I felt like was really perfect for this house on the beach. So I ended up using the base game rug, this like base game kind of wavy patterned one that has that light green color. And I put a big wide dining table on top of it. I used the Modern Luxe Kit light above it too. That Modern Luxe Kit light is kind of like a, I don't know, it's like a rounded shape sort of, but I thought it looked kind of like a wave or like a cloud maybe which I felt like worked really well for this space. Then we have kind of like a little corner tucked away next to the dining room. And in this space, I was considering putting a grand piano. You might've seen me try one out earlier in the video. I still felt like the grand piano was like slightly too big, but I did use a piano. I put one of the standing pianos from Growing Together over there. And then I found this kind of cute like lounge chair thing. I never use the sectional stuff from Dream Home Decorator very much. I thought I would when the pack first came out, but there's something about the lighting on that Dream Home Decorator stuff that makes it hard for me to use, but I kind of forget that it has a lounge chair that you can use that sort of has like a big long like chase lounge vibe. So I ended up putting that next to the piano in this space. I That was kind of like my final iteration though. At first I was trying to put in a bar. <laughs> I liked the idea of the bar. I love doing like little built-in bars in my Sims builds recently because I never use the mixology skill. So I've been trying to find more places where I can like make it easy to fit it in. So I tried over there, but I think because of how the window was, it just wasn't really gonna fit. I like it when I have a little like two wide corner I could tuck the bar away into, but in this case, it didn't really work for it. We do have a small entryway too. So next to the door, I put like a big table and a mirror. I found the pastel pop kit mirror actually is like very similar in shape to the light from the Modern Luxe kit. So I was really excited about that. I was like, this is perfect. It looks like a puddle of water or something. <laughs> and they totally match each other. So we use them both. It's kind of fun to discover items from packs that fit together really well. Cause I don't normally, think to pair the pastel pop kit and the modern luxe kit together. They're both one of my favorite kits, but I just don't really think about those furniture pieces matching because they're very different vibes. But in this case, those two items work perfectly together. And that's pretty much the full downstairs living space done. So we're moving into the bedroom now. I did a couple of the bathrooms and cut that footage out because it was just too slow. <laughs> There's three bathrooms in this house. There's a primary bathroom downstairs attached to this bedroom. There's like a little powder room with just a toilet and a sink downstairs. And there's like a bigger kids bathroom upstairs too. I'll show you those more at the end of the video when I get to the tour. But this downstairs bedroom is the primary one and I wanted it to be really fancy and like very relaxing in vibes. This is actually one of the only places in the house that I used island living in, which is kind of funny considering we are in the island living world. But a lot of the wood colors are a bit too yellowy orange for me. So I didn't really feel like it matched this house that well. I kind of gave up and used it anyway in this bedroom. And this is one of my favorite bedrooms I've done in a long time. I will admit it's very white and very blue. It's it's very much giving blue suburban and I'm really sorry, but it's a beach house. <laughs> you can't avoid the blue in a beach house. But I really liked the wall next to the bed with the little slat wall and the mirror that I raised up and put on there. I also put a really pretty vanity in this room and I don't use the vanities that often too. I was kind of inspired by the Modern Luxe kit in this house. 
house. It was used a lot around here. If you haven't seen this, the Modern Luxe kit does have a vanity. Before this, the only vanities were in Vintage Glamour, but we got a new one in Modern Luxe, and it's kind of probably the best one in the game. <laughs> it's a little bit more modern, obviously, but I prefer the, the way the mirror looks on this, and the swatches are a bit easier to use. The Vintage Glamour ones are nice, but they kind of come in weird wood colors, so they don't really match that much stuff. One of them kind of looks like it's made out of plastic, too, but anyway. We've moved upstairs for a second to start thinking about furnishing this upstairs outdoor area. So we have a huge sparkly pool. I put some lounge chairs. I did originally put a floaty in the pool, but I ended up getting rid of it because I thought it kind of looked strange with the house. I really love that pool floaty though. It has like a pastel rainbow swatch and it's so cute, <laughs> but I did end up deleting it. I also put in some things like a telescope. We have a couple of little planter boxes. I was going through and trying to find a lot of plants that would work out here. Obviously in the planters, I put like basil. I put a couple like little herbs in there for your sims to use. I always pretend my sims are gonna cook with them. I'll end up like putting basil and parsley in my sims build and be like, oh my god, this will be so useful for your sims. They can cook with the basil. I never do it. I never actually use it. But it's kind of a nice vibe. It's like fun in theory. <laughs> so we've got a tiny little garden upstairs. Downstairs, we have a huge bar and grill area set up. In hindsight, I probably should have tried to like flip that around somehow because the bar stools are just facing the window. It would have been way nicer if the bar stools were facing out to the ocean, but I didn't organize it that way. <laughs> so it's a little bit too late, but I did also put a little dining table. We've got a couple of chairs for your sims to sit at. I put a fire pit. There's lounge chairs on the beach as well. Ignore Stanley, by the way, who's just digging in the sand. He was trying to plant another basil for me, <laughs> but just ignore him. And this fire pit table. So it's actually a coffee table. It's not really a fire pit. It's that kind of gray thing in between the two couches outside on the patio that comes from city living. And it just is a coffee table. There's no fire. You can't like roast marshmallows on it, but it looks like a fire pit because when you're in game, it has like little fire VFX. And I feel like it's a lot nicer than the real fire pits for that reason, because it still looks like a fire pit. So you still have the vibes, but it won't ever catch on fire. And the other fire pits are kind of like, it's hard to explain, but they're very traditional. Maybe they don't fit this like modern vibe. They're like campfires with rocks around them and stuff. And this is more like fancy gas fireplace energy, right? Which is more what we're going for with this house. We're moving back inside now to work on that big upstairs second living room I talked about. And this room I had a really hard time with because it's kind of a weird shape. It's like a big open rectangle. So I was kind of struggling with where to put everything. And I knew I wanted to have a TV and a couch. So you'll see the first thing I did was build a little dividing wall actually. And I tried to make a small divider to build a tiny little office space. I liked the idea of a little work from home office nook up here. I could have closed this off and made it into a separate room, but I decided to keep it open just for the, the vibes. And I just tucked a little desk away in that corner. And then the rest of the space I used to make a secondary living room. And I struggled a lot with how to orient this because I liked the idea of having it be facing the window so you can look outside at the big, beautiful ocean view. But then it kind of looked weird. And then I wanted to have a TV, but it also kind of looked weird and it was off center. So what I ended up changing it to was a little couch right there and a fish tank. <laughs> I used the fish tank from Dine Out on that wall. So you can sit here, you can look at the fish inside the house or look at the actual fish outside the house. Fish tanks are one of those things that I always forget about in The Sims 4. I think because they're so big, it's kind of hard to use them. And also I have zero desire to have fish in real life. So like maybe they just don't really cross my mind, but it does look really cool in here. I also put some cute little poof type ottoman things down there so you can pull them up around the table and sit. I did originally think about putting some game tables up here. A lot of people in my Twitch chat were saying to put a pool table, which is funny because there is no pool tables in The Sims 4. We do have foosball and we have ping pong, but neither of those really fit the vibes. They just didn't really work. I would love to have an actual pool table in this game. That's one of those things people have been asking for for a long time. And we had pool tables in the older Sims games. So I don't really know why they haven't done it yet in The Sims 4. It might just be that they haven't really gotten to it yet. Cause there's sometimes just stuff that doesn't really fit into regular packs. They probably could have done a pool table instead of foosball back in the day with get together and then decided on foosball for whatever reason. It might have to do with like ease of animation. I don't really know, but I would love to see a pool table. Would I ever play with it? Probably not, but it'd be cool for like building bars and stuff. <laughs> so it wouldn't be a bad thing, but we're working on the kids' bedrooms now. And there are two kids' bedrooms upstairs. One is a kid's room. One is more of a teen's room. And these two kids are both extremely lucky because they both have private balconies. The primary bedroom does not have a private balcony, but both of the kids' rooms do. I probably could have swapped this out and had like just one big primary bedroom upstairs, but I'd rather have more space for more Sims. I did a kind of simple balcony for the kids' bedroom. I thought about like decorating it more with kids' stuff, but I didn't really like having random kids' furniture 
visible from the front of the house. So I ended up just putting a couple of chairs back there. And then on the back balcony, I put like a yoga mat and a couple of other like more skill building type items. Yoga, honestly, is one of the more fun skills in The Sims 4. It seems like the kind of thing that I forget about a lot, but if you get really high in the wellness skill, your Sims can teleport. Why do I not use that more often? It's like level eight and you can teleport around. There's also a couple of new recipes that you can make. Like there's all kinds of fun things that you can do with yoga. And it's kind of fun to watch them because like when they're bad at it, they fall over. It's just a nice skill. Spa day is kind of like a unexpected hit of a pack, <laughs> especially with the, the update they did to it a couple of years ago. Now it has like the nail painting and stuff. It is not really as bad as you might expect it to be. You don't really think about spa day as like one of the best packs for The Sims 4, but honestly, the wellness skill is pretty cool. And we're just about done now with this house. There is one small problem I should also address. Uh, I just sized up a big round rug and yes, it is clipping through the wall. Here's the thing. You can't see it in the other room because it's underneath the desk. So I just decided to deal with it. Imagine in real life, they would have had a custom rug made to fit the room perfectly because they're rich. In The Sims, it clips into the sibling's bedroom. <laughs> but again, you can't see it. So if you can't see it, is it really there? No, everything's fine. So just ignore that part, okay? I probably shouldn't have told you. <laughs> but with that, the build is completely done. So I built this on the 40 by 30 lot up here in Suwani. It's kind of cool because it has its like own private island. The only problem is there's a literal volcano right next door. Look at it on the gallery. You can see the volcano like smoking in the background. Isn't that horrifying? There's also kind of a big trash problem in the ocean around it, but just ignore that part as well. And this is what the fully finished product looks like in game. So quick overview of the outside. We have so many plants surrounding this lot. I don't know if that was a good idea or not because it has this very clean, pristine vibe and then like really overgrown lush landscaping. So I don't know if that's like conflicting style wise, but I like the plants. So I used them. In the backyard, we have a lot of stuff. So we have a cute little lounge chair section with a drink tray over here. We've got some chairs and a little umbrella right here for you to use. There's a beach towel laid out on the floor. We also have a little seating area with an umbrella table for you to eat at. There's that fire pit I was talking about. And we have the bar and grill back here. When you come back around to the front of the house though, when you first walk up, we've got a little pathway. There's a wall mailbox and a chess table downstairs. When you come in, we've got a small entry table right here and you sort of enter straight into this beautiful view of the outside and the dining room. In this dining room, we have that kind of cute lounge chair I was mentioning and the piano. We also have a dog bowl over here because the dog eats in the formal dining room, of course. This is the downstairs bathroom. It's very simple, it's very small, but it's functional. Back around this way, we have a huge living room and this kind of cute staircase setup. I really like the wood paneling combo on that wall and I love the dog bed tucked underneath the stairs. I feel like this space was like made for a dog bed. It fits it so perfectly. And then we have a huge plant in this corner and a really lovely kind of light colored kitchen. The Home Chef Hustle Pack is life-changing. I love this kitchen set. Also downstairs, we've got a tiny hallway that takes you into the primary bedroom. So in here, they have kind of a weird layout. It's got like a divider, but you walk into like a little dressing area. There's a dresser and a vanity table. And then we have this beautiful bed, which I'm realizing I probably should have used a shorter ceiling light over. I didn't really think about how tall that was. <laughs> oh no. I discover a mistake like this after it's been built for days and it's already on the gallery. <laughs> but anyway, that's the bedroom. I really like this wall. I love this big mirror on the wall too. They have a very big ensuite bathroom. They've got a shower tub combo, a couple of sinks, a little toilet. I actually considered for a time maybe trying to split this bathroom up and having like a separate pool bathroom. Oh my God, my entire computer just crashed. My recording looks to be safe still, but I don't even know what I was just talking about. I'm just gonna show you the upstairs. So we have this kind of cool wraparound staircase that leads you into this big open second floor living room. I really like this little tiny office nook specifically because of this mosquito stuff bookshelf, which I never thought I would say, but honestly, the mosquito pack has a couple of really good things. <laughs> I like the corner window too in here. And then back around this side, this is that open living room space. There's a bunch of seating up here and you can go through these nice open doors to get outside to the pool as well. I didn't put a fence around the edge, so hopefully it's safe, <laughs> but it's the same, so they'll be fine. I do have some windows into the pool in the back as well, which is kind of cool. I wish it was like completely one big glass panel instead of two, but we don't have a four wide glass window. Also upstairs, we've got this really nice kids bathroom. I actually gave them a separate water closet in here and I closed off the toilet. I liked the idea of that because I was pretending like in real life, if you and your sibling shared this bathroom, it'd be nice if you could like both brush your teeth or like one of you brush your teeth, one of you use the bathroom. It's helpful in the morning, like before school. It's kind of like at a hotel how they do that. <laughs> so that's 
what I was channeling. In this first kid's bedroom, I used a lot of the eco lifestyle stuff actually. This is an eco lifestyle craftable bed. This kid has like flip flop lights and their own little desk. <laughs> um, that is the clipping rug that I told you about, but don't look. Don't look at that. They have their own huge balcony and then a couple other kids things like a science table and their sibling has this kind of cool gamer room with like a fancy gamer desk and like kind of an alien vibe. Lots of space happening in here. I love this wallpaper. I've never really used it that often, but recently I've been putting it in a lot of builds and they have an eco lifestyle bed too, plus like a lava lamp and outside they have that yoga mat and an easel. So lots of skill building stuff kind of tucked away and that is the fully finished build. Hopefully that tour made sense. Honestly, the recording crashing in the middle of it has kind of thrown me off a little bit. <laughs> So I don't know what I'm talking about. And I have one last horrible thing to show you. I have an issue with clipping on this wallpaper. So the pattern doesn't repeat like a lot of other stone wallpapers do. So you can see the seam in between the two stone layers. To show you an example of a different version, if I use this stone from Growing Together, it's slightly visible like right here. But for the most part, the repeating line, you can't really tell. This one from Island Living, you can absolutely tell. <laughs> and that has been really bothering me, but I I put it up to a vote in my Twitch chat and the people over there said that it didn't bother them and to use it anyway. So if you hate this, you can blame Twitch chat. And honestly, maybe you should follow me on Twitch so that you can be a part of this next time and prevent me from having a stupid repeating wallpaper. <laughs> you could fix this next time. So I'll link my Twitch channel down below. I stream the Sims pretty much every day over on Twitch. And with that, I'm gonna end this video right here. Thank you for watching. Have the best rest of your day and I'm gonna catch you all tomorrow. Okay, bye everybody. I am so not a beach person. Like I just don't really have any interest in like laying out in the sun. I'll go walk on the beach, but I don't want to hang out there all day. But this is kind of making me want to go to the beach. I've been thinking about it a lot recently and it kind of sounds like fun.